You know, a Times Magazine piece that maybe some of you saw out this month it brings Gary Hart's name back into the spotlight. Former Colorado senator, as you know, ran for president back in 87. A lot of people thought he had a pretty good shot, in fact. However, his nomination went down the tubes in large part after the Miami Herald published a story about his extramarital affair. Hart pulled out of the race for the president five days after the story broke. If you look carefully, you might even see monkey business. I can't make this up was the name of the boat that he and, and that's not his wife, were on. Bill uh, Clinton's marital status also shows us how an extramarital affair can rock, um, some would say destroy, or maybe even recover from um, that kind of a scandal. And tonight, I want to bring in our, our uh, panel here and talk about this both maybe in the then and the now. And tonight we're joined by Shelley Mayer, Democratic New York State Assemblywoman, uh, representing the great city of Yonkers, one of our favorites, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, Mike Morey, Senior Vice President of Public Relations at SKD Knickerbocker, and before that, spokesman for the Christie Quinn mayoral campaign and a communications director of Senator Chuck Schumer. He survived that. And Andrew <laughs> Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach this, but for me, I'm curious from your end, has the standards changed? Um, it's not as simple to say you're caught screwing around maybe before you ran for office or at office, you're dead or alive, but is it different now than it was 10, 20 years ago? Well, I think in some ways it's different, some ways it's the same. It's different in that uh, there is sort of a widespread cynicism about elected officials' political life. It's very commonplace. People say, oh, whatever you do up there in Albany, you all, whatever yeah. you all do up there in Albany. <laughs> and so there's, this, there's tremendous cynicism about politics, politics and elected officials and all of that. At the same time, there's a reluctance for people to get into the fray, in part because all of their personal life is subject to examination. So I think both things still exist, and there are forces that unfortunately limit the pool of mm. people who are willing to get into the fray. I want to get into later whether it should or shouldn't matter, but Dominic, I think it matters um, not just the infidelity, but how. The Gary Hart that I showed, he dared the press back then. I dare you go find something. And of course the Herald did, and of course he made a photo op for him with a boat and everything else. Bill Clinton, how he did it in the Oval Office. Um, uh, Elliot Spitzer, you know, that he was the crusader and holier than now, and then the client number nine. There have been other infidelities, but if you, it seems that if you are a hypocrite or shove it in the face, especially the press more than the public, it seems, uh, you're going to have a steeper fall. Well, I, I think there's a... What's a, the best way to say this? I'll use the words Don't of drag the, her into of the this, Assemblywoman. Yeah. A cynicism as it relates to the public, as it relates to these issues. But I remember, Richard, you know, and you, you're, to answer your question, yes, if you're a hypocrite and you get caught, you got a big problem. Um, but I remember back in 88 when I was assigned to cover the national presidential campaign. And, you know, I'd only been in journalism a couple of years. And the candidates that I'm talking about, they'll remain nameless. But some of the uh, seasoned political reporters said to me, hey, kid, can you guess which one is the mistress? And, and this was about several candidates that was making their way through. And I would guess, and they would go yes or no. And, but what I'm trying to say is that, Richard, uh, political reporters, these issues are nothing new. They go back way in American history. It's just that now they're talked about as it relates to presidential candidates, but mistresses have been, a long, been a, around for a very long time. But that's time. the change that happened, and I think it, the Gary Hart scandal did change a lot of that. I mean, we learn a lot more about the private lives of the people who are running for public office. A lot of times that's a positive thing, that, that, that we got details about Rick Perry's ranch in the name of the ranch that I can't say on TV. That's the kind of thing that would only come out in this new environment that we're in. Having said that, are we disqualifying people well, you're jumping ahead to where we're going on this, but I still think, I mean, just look at that window of time with Elliot Spitzer. We hear everything come down. He does the press conference where he says, I'm out. Then we have David Patterson come in, and we learned all sorts of stuff about David Patterson the next 48 hours, it seemed, and people like, whatever, just let him go ahead. I always wondered, was it just that we, I mean, I remember even Joe Bruno at the time was like, okay, fine, just, just put him in, right, um, before we learn anything else. But is it, 
how it happens as much as what they do? Yeah, it, it is a little bit. So ever, you're right. It, it, since the advent of the 24-hour cable news networks and the need for constant new news, a story at 1 o'clock is old news by 3 o'clock, and so the need to get into personal lives for the 24-hour cycle of news, that sort of created a lot of this drama. And Gary Hart sort of tore the Band-Aid off of this kind of coverage. The difference, I would say, is that there is a difference between the public. The public can be very forgiving, as we've seen in multiple scandals. We saw it with Bill Clinton. We saw it originally with Anthony Weiner. The problem with Anthony Weiner was when you get tripped up in the lie about the process. And so what wound up happening in many of these scandals is that even Elliot Spitzer was given that second chance, and he ran a good campaign and came pretty darn close to becoming the control of New York City. But it's the lie. Um, and what you find out is in the when the media starts investigating your personal life, and they're going to do it, it's par for the course now, and it's whether we like it or not, if you're going to get in this business, you better be yep. prepared for it. It is much better to be truthful about it than to lie about it, even when you justify the lie because it's my personal life and I didn't want to I didn't want to put that out there. I wanted to protect my children. I wanted to protect my spouse. But at the end of the day, what you find is these scandals, you can survive them. Um, personal sexual history is not as big of a deal so long as you don't get tripped up in a lie in the process. And that's what you saw. Anthony Weiner was on the fast track to become mayor at one point, and it was the lie that he stopped doing what he did that caught up to him. So here comes the, the debatable part about it. Should it or shouldn't it matter? And, and I'm going to take maybe the old uh, school approach here, but Elliot Spitzer prosecuted Johns. Elliot Spitzer, forget about the over across state lines and all that. For me, the problem was he made it clear that this was not some victimless crime here, and he went ahead and he did it, okay? What, between him and his wife is one thing. But I would have a tough time taking what he said from that point going forward. And while I didn't want Bill Clinton impeached, the lack of judgment and discretion he used doing what he did in the Oval Office, I found and I still find so reprehensible. Should I, as a voter expect more out of my elected officers other than to say, hey, you know what, they're human beings too. You're running for office. It should come with the territory that, part of my friends, you should keep it in your pants for four years or whatever your term is. It's not too much for me to expect, is it? Well, I think it's slightly more complicated. I think, I feel that a personal life of an elected official, generally, if there aren't uh, victims, is really, you know, if there's consensual activity, it's, it's not for everyone's business, and if it poses, if it creates no harm to anyone, I don't see why it affects you as a voter. Does it speak to judgment, though, it and discretion? It could speak to judgment, and, but here's my focus. I'm much more worried about the cynicism of the non-elected official. That's where I come in. My fear is that we are making people just tr trash all elected officials as liars and cheaters, when in fact that's not the case. And we are making this a group of people who used to be held in high respect in much lower esteem. And it's but one, because of the conduct of some of them, but also because of this airing of it all the time. So I, my focus is on how voters feel. I, I think there can be lots of personal things in people's personal life that are not relevant for voters. But I think it's very unfortunate when voters have turned cynical, and I think it's part of what's the, happened. The one, the one thing I would add to that, though, that where you invite the scrutiny, and Gary Hart invited the scrutiny, but where you would invite the scrutiny is when, as a public official, I, I don't disagree with you. In fact, I think you know what happens between a marriage, just like my marriage, your marriage, is, uh, is personal between those two individuals. Um, the notion that it would spill out into the public for the sake of spilling out in the public, I don't agree with. I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think it's right. However, when you run for office as a politician, and so many politicians today run for office, on the back of their family values, mm -hmm. on their personal lives. They actually present their entire narrative wrapped around their personality and personal life. Then they're inviting, eventually, that kind of scrutiny. And at that point, I do think you cannot say, you cannot run for office and your platform be rooted in who you are as an individual, in your family, and your children. And then later on down the road, when someone starts looking at that and it looks like some of your skeletons might fall out of the closet, you have no I, right to be upset. I guess, I guess I'm the only one who feels this way. But it, no one's making anybody run for office, okay? I mean, you give up a lot running for office. Everybody knows, they're all big boys and girls. So you know what you're getting into when you run for it. So my point is, if you know the microscope in the 24-hour news cycle, and 2014 is going to be what it is, and you're screwing around, especially where everybody needs to share everything nowadays, um, 
I don't feel any sympathy that people are invading their personal lives. If you feel the need to go outside your marriage, that's your own business, do it. But don't run for office. I, I, I'm not remotely Wait, as Richard. understanding for these poor people that, you know, the poor media is prying in their lives. No, made them run for office. Well, one, and I shouldn't say this, but what I find very ironic, the journalists that are doing the reporting on the politicians, we should look into their lives because I know <laughs> what they do when they're not reporting the stories. Don't be looking at me, John. I'm not looking at you. Yeah. I'm not looking at you. Yeah. But I'm telling you that many of these reporters that are standing up there acting holier than thou, they're worse than the politicians. But because they control the microphone, we never, ever, ever hear those stories. And when they do, involving newspaper publishers and alleged affairs with prominent officials, they're taken down off the internet in less than 10 seconds. Yeah. And anybody that knows, you can guess what I'm talking well, about here. Well, so, oh, I don't have to guess. I know never have the problem. Yes. You know? <laughs> Andrea, I, I know you want to get a word in edgewise. We've got to wrap soon. We've got a problem in this country. We keep lamenting the fact that our elected officials aren't able to put country above pr politics. We're, we're not getting the right caliber of elected official. And are we disqualifying qualified people, people who could do the job based on basically what, what is gossip or the kind of thing that we would talk about at the water cooler. Look back at, at a lot of our greatest American presidents. Look but you're back assuming at they would have done look, it too. But you're assuming that the, the FDRs of the, the 20th century and, and they, the JFKs would have done exactly the same behavior in today's media coverage. And I don't know they would have. I, I, maybe their own personal ambitions for what they wanted to do in office would have trumped the libido. Maybe they wouldn't. Who I don't know. But, but I'm just but saying it, you can't take if it you, as... If you get, if you have a, a medical issue and you have to go to a specialist, are you mm -hmm. looking to find out if that specialist cheated on his wife or are you looking for the best person to get that job done? But the if specialist need... isn't running and isn't under the 24-hour spotlight of the media. I, a fair point. But again, we're looking for the best person to get the job done who can, who can help when we need help. Mm. I think that might be something that we, we need to move past or at least uh, consider. Fair enough. Um, and I bet you most of the table will agree with you. Is there still a double standard for women when it comes to men when, on this issue? Well, I think there's... Uh, there's you don't a get lot given as much from the public if you do have something outside the marriage? Well, I think there's less scrutiny, actually, of women in this, because men, frankly, have been culprits 100,000 times more, and <gasps> they, they get out there and, and they, you know, they have a tendency yeah. uh, to not to discipline themselves. I think discipline goes with being in elected office. I do agree with you there. Thank I don't you. go as far as you. But if you want to be an elected official, I think discipline is part of what you are saying is a good quality for leadership, and I'm going to be a disciplined person. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about um, uh, politics, but we'll leave uh, the stuff from the bedroom or outside of it, and we'll talk about what's going on on the campaign trail and some impacts, specifically the New York State Senate and the balance of power. Who's going to come out on top? Officials here are the voters here. I'll tell you what we mean about that and throw more alphabet soup letters at you as well. Stay with us.